Hello, welcome to the channel and thanks for watching. And this video is all about relatively simple extreme rust effects and what better way of experimenting with extreme rust than adding something to a Death Guard army. So I picked up a couple of Horus Heresy Rhinos, which I think are the better version of the Rhinos for Death Guard personally, to experiment with this rust effect on. This is a different rust effect than I've ever done with Death Guard army and I wanted to really push the boat out and go really, really extremely rusty. Now I have started off with battle damaging these vehicles. Now the effects I'm going to show really you could use for any army, it doesn't have to be a Chaos one, it could be absolutely any Thin for Warhammer, Warhammer 40,000, any kind of miniature game really. But I wanted to just demonstrate it with Death Guard. Now I've started off as stage one by really seriously battle damaging these vehicles. So you've seen there taking a pin drill, drilled some what would be bullet holes or impact rounds, using the edge of a hobby knife to sort of scrape those outwards. Then moved on to the clippers, chopping off little bits of uh, the spikes you've seen there, gouging into the arm with some quite serious gouges. And this really is going to form the basis of where the rust on these vehicles is kind of going to start and that kind of rotten corrosion. Taking the hobby knife there as well and filing down some of the uh, major sharp edges and just really making these look like they've had some serious kind of uh, uh, warfare done to them. Now, I am doing them, again, as a Death Guard. What I'm not doing, if you watch my normal um, channel, my normal Death Guard videos, I'm not going to go super kind of um, infested and demonic or whatever. This is a pure rust kind of effect. I may add onto the vehicles later with some sort of demonic pieces, but this is quite suitable for use for any army, not just like a Death Guard and Nurgle one. Just on there, I just drilled out a couple of missiles from the missile launcher, and then it's time to sort of start on the effect. Now, this isn't the rust effect, but this is just getting the vehicle ready for the painting. I'm just using some Vallejo Diorama effects thick mud, slapping it onto various bits of the vehicle, just to add a bit of visual difference around the tracks and things. Now, here is the start of the rust process. Sprayed the models black and then sprayed them lead belcher. And you do want to start off with a silver base coat for the rust areas. So if you don't want to spray the whole model silver, the areas you want the rust on, paint them silver first. Now what I'm doing is taking the battle damage areas and using that as the basis for where I'm going to start the sort of rusty process coming out from. I'm taking the Games Workshop paint, a Typhus Corrosion, and you can see there it's kind of like a textured, interesting coloured technical paint that then dries a different kind of darker rust colour. And I've painted that all around the areas of the damage I've put on so it looks like the creeping rust has basically rotted off the paint that's on there. Now this next paint is again another Games Workshop technical paint, a grill and earth. Now this is like a paste. Now I'm using a paintbrush to put this on. Usually I use like a spatula type thing, but going for a paintbrush this time. And you'll see the little vehicle in the background. I did two vehicles at the same time. The one I'm showing you here is one I think has worked a lot better. And this I have painted this on in quite a thick layer. I'm gonna say sort of half a mil to a mil. Now I would experiment with this on a, a blank model or an old model or something so you can see it but this is the one that I've put a relatively thick layer on and you can see that when it dries it cracks and fragments and makes it look like the paint's coming off. Now the first one I didn't put it on thick enough normally use a spatula this time with a brush it wasn't thick enough and those shiny patches are where I've taken a Vallejo uh, chipping medium and put that on the top again as a sub experiment. I will reference that very briefly but it's more about the the two stages so far with the typhus corrosion and the agrelin earth. So as the agrelin earth is all over there, you'll see as we start putting the paint layers on, all those lovely cracks and things that are on the outside of the um, typhus corrosion we put on. So you'll see I'm only painting on top of the agrelin earth. The idea for that is the typhus corrosion is where the paint is completely flaked off. And then the areas I'm painting now are the areas where the paint is still remaining on the vehicle, but it's really badly corroded and it's flaking and it's had all the weathering that you will see as we progress through this build. So when I'm putting this on here, I am making sure not to push the paint into the cracks. I'm going over that surface. So as you can see, once we've done that green there, you can see then these cracks haven't got paint in there and you've not filled them in because some of the cracks will be very, very fine. If you go too heavy, it'll fill you know, those things in. Now this is the third stage of the rust effect and this is Rise of Rust, which is a Games Workshop uh, dry paint as they call it. So I'm literally dry brushing it, mostly focused on where that typhus corrosion has gone already uh, onto there, but I am also putting it across the entire model onto the raised edges and all over it. Now, that has left quite an orangey colour because I put it on relatively heavy, but the next stage of the wash we're going to see will dull that right down before we start again. Now again, I'm just putting some colours onto the missiles there and onto the gun. This video is not really about my Death Guard colour scheme. And again, if you were doing this on, say, an Ultramarine army, or in Pale Fists, or even onto a you know, a fantasy thing, or even a World War II tank, the colour scheme is entirely up to yourself. It's really focused on around those rust pieces, but I just thought I'd show it, and it gives me a, a bit of a space to talk about. And if you do fancy seeing more Death Guard, loads and loads of Death Guard videos on the channel, um, this is just an add-on to it. Now, here's the next stage of my process. It's kind of the fourth 
thing you're going to need to do. And this is a Vallejo sepia wash. And the reason I'm putting a sepia wash over the whole tank, as well as uh, over these rust areas, is that from a death guard, it makes sense to have them dirty and mucky. Now, if you were wanting the rest of the tank not to be that, I would just put this wash over the kind of rust areas that you're doing. Uh, for me, I think it makes sense over the whole model. Now, once that's thoroughly dried, um, you're trying to bring the colour scheme up. Now, this is the tank that I put the chipping medium on and not just the agrella and earth. I'm just going to show you what that has achieved. So we've not got many paint cracks and flakes, but we have got, you can see the slightly pinky areas to the right of the uh, exhaust. It's showing through that kind of under layer as it's chipped off and moved out. So a slightly different effect. So I want to focus mostly on the tank that I've done the agrella and earth on in a proper layer. So again, that's why you would need to experiment. But as you can see there, I'm putting on the second coat of my paint to lift the color scheme up and doing the same thing as I did before very very gently over where the agrellin earth has cracked and had the flaky paint effect again not to fill any gaps and this is really that kind of highlight layer as we've gone over and again you would do this in whatever color scheme you wanted uh, to for yourself but what I'm trying to do here is make it look like the paint is obviously over the normal paint um, quite thin so that those under layers are kind of showing through but when I'm working towards where the the main body of the rust is I'm only letting a little bit touch onto the top of where the main body of the rust is so it looks like there's still a little bit of paint over the top of that rust and it's about to flake off and it should give that nice kind of three or four uh, levels where where those impact marks are it's still relatively um, fresh then you hit out to where the, the rise of rust is then you hit out to the area where all that kind of peeling paint is and there's some uh, radiations kind of in between so once we've done that it's then going back over with the typhus corrosion at the very edges of where the rust is. So leaving it in the very center so it's a bit darker. Because we put that wash over the top, it's darkened down the rise of rust effect. So if you put this, um, sorry, the typhus corrosion effect, if you put then the typhus corrosion back on the outside areas, running up to the paint and running up to where the, the actual damage is, it will give a multiple color and tone effect. And it also gives a slightly different textured effect because you're putting some extra texture back on top as though the extreme part of the rust is building up underneath the paint and then it's flaking off. And we'll do some zoom in shots later so you can hopefully understand what I mean. So it's going back around with the typhus corrosion. And now I'm taking some um, bulk of metal type color, like a, a metal gray or whatever you want to use there to put some of the silver back in in the very depth of these impact craters so now you're going to have a really quite silvery if you put too much on like i've done here just wet your brush and you can take it back off before it starts to dry but we've got the very silver in the craters then we work out to the typhus corrosion that will be a double layer near the impact crater then into a single layer as you go kind of uh, into the middle um where it's had the wash over the top of it and back into the side. So I hope I'm making some sense as I'm going here. Now it's back onto the rise of rust color, but this time we are only doing it very, very lightly, just over the areas where that's had two layers of rust without going over the rest of the model. So this here is the one that uh, has had less of the agrella nurse, so it's less cracks on the paint, but I really like the effect at the front of the Rhino. Um, and sometimes with the rust, what I'd say is it's about getting it right. So having the rust build from the outside edges of panels, there's some of the panels on a couple of these Rhinos that I'm not quite happy with where I put it, but the actual effect, when we look at the top here of the all the rust layers and all the peeling paint, I'm really happy with. And to be honest, this did not add any time as it would to just a normal painting effect. This is the shot I particularly like. I think this area has worked really really well um, and it really has got a lot of grainy granular effects in there so it does look like there's multiple layers of peeling paint and and uh, kind of rust there so yeah that's kind of it really um, I hope I explained that relatively well it's a fairly simple process just using three additional paints uh, on top of what your normal paints would be the typhus corrosion the agrellin earth the rise of rust and to be honest you could probably skip the rise of rust and then the wash in that middle stage as to whatever you kind of want to use but Lots of shots here of, uh, I'll say nice, but the uh, gross kind of rust and rot. What I am going to do for my army, particular Death Guard, is combine this with some of the more demonic style of painting that I've done before. And I've got a couple of, uh, again, other projects I'm going to use it for. But as it is now, can be used for absolutely any army, whether it's Loyalist, whether it's Nurgle, whether it's even 40k. It could be for absolutely anything. And it's a really simple uh, rust technique. And I'm quite happy with what I've come up with. Hope you are as well. If you did like that, like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube jazz. And hopefully I will see you on another video.